everything changes. Hi, it's Pastor Ann. Hey, it's Miss Anna. Hi from Miss Jordan. Hey friends, it's Miss Alyssa. Hi, it's Miss Jacqueline. Hi, it's Miss Wendy. Hi, it's Miss Katie. Hey everyone, it's Mr. Germani, and I'm so excited to get to be here with you guys again. You see, this is a time and this is a place where we get to have fun and learn more about God. And let's have some fun by worshiping. I'll see you soon. Whenever I need some answers, God, I turn to you. You're chasing after me it makes me want to run to where you are God, you make this journey worth it I give you all my heart When I don't know what to do You help me figure it out God, I run to you When I need a solution I have no doubt So all month long, we've been talking about wisdom, and a lot of it came from King Solomon. A lot of his wisdom was written down in the book of Proverbs, which we can still read today. And just like King Solom Solomon, we can ask God for wisdom and tough decisions in our life. But also we can see God's wisdom in our relationships with others. So it reminds me of a passage in Proverbs 13, 20, and it says, Walk with wise people and become wise. A companion of foolish people suffers harm. If that makes sense, right? If we hang out with wise people, we become more and more wise. But if we hang out with people who aren't making the wise choice, then I guarantee you we're probably not making the wise choice either. Today, we're going to uh, hear about a story of King Solomon's son, Rehoboam. And let's check out and see if he listens to his father's advice. Ah. 
What are you doing out here, John? Oh, I just wanted to show you how green my thumb is. Oh, it's not green. It's just an expression. No, I'm trying to grow a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's not how those are supposed to work. <laughs> how did you just water it a little bit and then wait. Wait for what? There's no way that this is going to go. Oh! oh! Well, don't just stand there, Brandon. Help me catch it. How? But, but you just ran it. Oh no! They bite. Ah! They bite. I'm John. I'm Brandon, and welcome, welcome to, to the So and So Show. And we have a show we know you're gonna dig. Ha. Yep, you might say this show is groundbreaking. <laughs> Unless it gets too deep. What do you call a man with a shovel? Uh, what? Doug. <laughs> what do you call a man without a shovel? What? Douglas. Uh, okay, I think we're done. Okay. Well, not until we get to the bottom of this. Yeah, I think we're as low as we can possibly go. Moving, Moving on. on! Today is a very special day. The one that has been long talked about and patiently waited on Actually, for Actually, no, no, one, no one knew anything about this. One that no one knew about yet will go down in history. That's right. Several months ago, John and I buried a time capsule. Yeah, and in case you're like me, time capsules. Capsules? Capsule. Those things are not places where you keep clocks. Nope, it's a container where you put objects of the present time. Uh -huh. Could be anything, comic books, movies. Can of SpaghettiOs. Anything. Uh -huh. Then you bury it and dig it up in the future so you can see how much has changed during the time it was buried. So we decided to preserve some of the moments we've had here on the So and So Show. And yeah, that way we can see if we've learned anything since they happened. Yeah, and that will help us make wiser choices in the future. Exactly, so without further delay, it is time to open the, the time, time capsule. capsule. Whoa. <laughs> all right, let's see how this thing held up. Sorry about it. <laughs> That's all right. Woo. All right. Here we go. And, oh, oh, hey, look at that, a VHS tape. Can you believe we used to watch movies on these things? Why did we preserve our moments on VHS? We didn't bury the time capsule that long ago. I don't know why we preserved it, but let's watch it. Is there a problem with the way I'm speaking today? I, no, you speak properly. <laughs> Here we go. All right, and we will. I don't know how, I'm not sure this fits into the. Amateur. <laughs> what is that? Ancient technology I borrowed from the museum. Hmm, it's Moment number one. Food fight during the credits. Ah! No, oh yes, yes. Oh, this is who? Oh. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh! The Salisbury steak is disgusting. Ah! Oh. <laughs> uh, I remember that very well. What wisdom did you gain from that, John? Uh, I learned that it's unwise to have a food fight in a box with someone whose arms are longer than yours, even even from here. Oh wow! Yeah, see, see. <laughs> I learned that mashed potatoes, though tasty, are not good for your complexion. Ah, good to know. Yeah. All right, moment number two. It's over here, over oh. here. There you go. Grab a handful. Woo! Let's do two, just for good luck. Okay. Wow, that's amazing. The plastic building bricks completely disappeared. Are, no, are you serious? They're clearly right there. Shh, I'm concentrating. Let's have slash! John loses! Oh! Oh! And that's all the time we have for Hop Slosh! Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Any wisdom there? Yeah, I think maybe I'll wear shoes next time I play hopslosh. Better traction. Yeah, very true. Moment number three. Oh, cookies. Ooh, and milk. Mmm. Mm hmm <laughs> Next time, you should pour the milk into the glass before you eat the cookies. Hmm, I'm not sure I learned anything. Yeah. Got milk? Don't mind if I do. You know what else is wise? <laughs> what? It's Bible story time with Kellen. 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 <laughs> Hey guys, what's going on? Oh, we were just learning from our past. Oh, that's cool. Actually, we have a moment for you. You do? Yeah, Kellen moment. Do you guys need anything else? Uh... Nope, we don't need anything else, Kellen. Good, you could have warned me. Yeah, bye Kellen. All right, I'll uh, see you guys next time. Did you gain any wisdom from that moment, Kellen? Yep. Slime takes a long time to get out of your hair, so I do not recommend getting it in there. Very wise. Hey, do you have something for us? I do, and it has nothing to do with slime. Perfect. Take it away, Kellen. Today's story is actually a verse from the Book of Romans, which was a letter Paul wrote several years after Jesus died and rose again. This is how the verse starts. Don't live the way this world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. What Paul wrote was so different than anything people were used to back then. So, to help me tell things a little different, I've got my cheer squad with me. Take it away, girls. Yo, yo, Jackie. What up, Dee Dee? Are you ready to lay down some wisdom? Girl, let's do this. Do not live the way the world lives. No, let the way you think completely change you. Do not live the way the world lives. Change the way you think right now. Don't live the way this world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. The world might be telling you to only look out for yourself, but when Jesus was here, he said we should love others. That's an entirely different way to think. Paul wrote that when you think that way, then you will be able to test what God wants for you, and you will agree that what he wants is right. I think we should hear how the cheer squad breaks that down. To me, Didi. Oh. <laughs> Do you like tests? Oh, I destroy tests. Kick it. <laughs> Once you change the way you think, you and God will be in sync. Then you can listen, study, and test to know God's will is the best. If we let our way of thinking be completely changed, we can see for ourselves that what God wants for us is best, because after all, his plan is good and pleasing and perfect. 
Let's hear one more from the squad. You know what I was thinking, Jackie? What were you thinking, Dee Dee? Ooh, that I'm ready to wrap this thing up. Oh, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> ready, set, face. H I S. His plan is good, it's pleasing, and it's perfect. That is understood. H I S. His plan is good. So follow God at home and in your neighborhood. Your thinking must change so that you can test. Let's give it up for the cheer squad. Woo! See you later. Paul was pretty clear. We need to let our way of thinking be changed. Now, this won't happen overnight. This is a lifelong commitment to let God lead us into his way of thinking. When we do that, we'll learn what's best and we'll make wiser decisions. Like eating only five slices of pizza instead of nine. I would say that's wise. Or deciding not to stay up all night playing video games. Hmm. Very wise. Or maybe just listening to what your parents or teachers are asking the first time they say it instead of the seventh. That would make a big difference, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. Thanks, Kellen. No problem. I'll see you guys next time. Will do. Sure thing. How long do you think it took uh, him to get all the slime out of his hair? I don't know, an hour? I was going to say three. Two days. Two days? Two days. Now it's time to reveal, reveal the, the question. question. How are you wiser than you used to be? I think I'm wiser than I was 20 minutes ago because A, now I know how to play a VHS tape. And two, I learned some new cheers. H-I-S, his plan is good. Yeah, and, yeah. and I'm wiser because I used to think doing a cartwheel down the stairs was safe until I landed on my face. Really? What grade were you in? It was last week. Moving on. <sighs> okay. Talk about it together. How are you wiser than you used to be? And we'll see you next time. We'll be making some new moments for the next time capsule, and I am sure we'll be oh so wise. Yes, and probably a little silly too. Oh, Cap definitely. <laughs> That's the so-and-so show, everybody. Bye. Capsule. That's right. So God's people split into two kingdoms. King Rehoboam ruled over Judea. King Jeroboam ruled over Israel. King Rehoboam nearly lost all the kingdom because people didn't trust him and no longer want to follow him. So what can we learn from this story? Just like King Solomon said, walk with the wise and become wise. We can learn from King Rehoboam's mistake by spending time with people who are wise, people who love God, people who love us, and wants his best for us. And what's great to see is that we get to see God's wisdom through each and every one of these people in our lives. All right, friends, I'm gonna pray first. Everyone, hands in the air, full for our prayer. Three, two, one. Dear God, we are so grateful that we are able uh, to make wise decisions because you give us the wisdom to do so. Lord, I ask um, this week as we are going through uh, tough decisions in our lives that we are able to think about the story and uh, remember that uh, not to make the foolish mistake, but to make the wise one. Lord, I ask that you would uh, be with us this week and uh, that we would be reminded of you each and every day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, friends, I'll see you next time. Bye.